Welcome to the Creative Homeschool Podcast. In this podcast, I'm coming at you to deliver you a weekly dash of creativity to make your homeschool exciting for your kids, but for you too. We're going to explore all of the different ways to creatively homeschool. Games, field trips, unit studies, writing activities, kid businesses, art, and more. I'm your host, Julie Soule, longtime homeschool mom, shenanigan enthusiast, espresso drinker, and founder and co-owner of Soul Spark Let's Art. I've helped thousands add creativity and joy to their homeschool, and I'm ready to help you too. Ready to get started? Let's go. I'm talking about falling behind today, and this is something that I think goes through every single homeschooler's mind. Are my kids behind? But where do we get this idea of falling behind from? And where did we get the idea that education is a race? I'm still learning every day, even as an adult. I still don't know how to roll pie crust, so I buy it. I'm fairly confident I could not do a knee replacement surgery. I mean, no one's going to let me even try. And I think I'm forever incapable of threading or using a sewing machine. Sorry, Grandma. Now, does this mean I'm stupid? Does this mean I did that whole education thing wrong? No, because education is a journey. Now, there's a quote that I heard recently that really spoke to me and made me really think about what do I know and am I continuing to learn even as an adult? And there are lots of different variations of this quote, but most of them sound like this. Most people die at 25, but it takes 60 years to bury them. Now, what exactly does that mean? So many of us as adults, we feel like once we're done with school, that there isn't anything more to learn, right? But if we really think about this, then the goal of homeschooling really isn't just math, language, art, science, art, or any other subjects, because we want to always have that joy of learning. So one of the main goals is to enforce the love of learning, to embrace curiosity, to embrace asking questions, to embrace the process of finding the answer, not just the answer itself. So it's not just about math. It's not about where you are in your math curriculum. It's not about if you forgot to do that science page. And I'm reminded of my oldest daughter and her friend. They were and continue to be polar opposites. My friend's daughter moved really early, but didn't speak as much until she was closer to two. And my daughter was the opposite. At one, she was telling her friend how to move, but she had no interest in even attempting to crawl. Soon, they were both walking through the woods. That's always what happens. You know, we always worry about our kids. Are they behind? Starts really early, doesn't it? Soon, we went on a hike, and one's racing through the forest with the wind upon her face, with all the joy in the world, and one strolling along, kind of behind, noticing every single insect every single mushroom, were they both happy? Yes, because it was all about the process, the journey. One learned to increase her speed, to strengthen her muscles, how to skip, how to jump. She learned how the light looked through the trees while she was running at top speed. And the other learned about mushrooms, how some grew on trees, others on the ground, how some bugs looked like they were jumping and others looked like they were dancing. She said hello to every squirrel and noticed that their noses twitched Did they both learn? Again, yes, in their own ways. Now, were either of them behind? Was the one that was running, was she behind because she didn't notice a single mushroom? No. And was my daughter behind because she couldn't run as fast? Again, no. When we think of homeschooling as a single way, the only thing that happens is we increase our own anxiety and that passes to our kids. During the winter months, so many of us make an intentional decision to slow down. And we had a curriculum that, you know, we were so perfect at implementing and it starts to fade in favor of cuddles and movie discussions and hot chocolate taste testing. We argue if the movie or the book is better. It's always the book. Spoiler alert. And literature and language arts sneak in, even though we weren't doing an actual curriculum. We get cozy with board games, realizing how many we've never tried. We might try the ones that we got as gifts. We read the text on those playing cards. We add up scores. Or with some lately, there's even multiplication to get the scores. We learn logic. We learn careful planning. And I don't know if you've ever tried to put pieces back in a box, but that is some serious organization skills and spatial reasoning, trying to put everything back. 
We do more art. We try out our new art supplies. And we make beautiful rainbow art that decorates the walls on some of the shorter daylight times of winter. We paint what we see, or maybe we just paint for the fun of it. And we create things out of old boxes. We do forts. We dance. We learn about different dances from other cultures. Geography just snuck in. We build snow forts, art and architecture. We make snow ice cream, science and cooking. We catch snowflakes on our tongues. We marvel at their design. Hello, math and science. And sometimes it still feels like we're not doing enough, but we are. Sometimes we look at the curriculum on the side and we feel strongly that we bought this curriculum, so we must use it. And we can. We can do a single math lesson and we can also do games and art and watching movies too. But one thing that winter provides us with is a sense of recharging. And just like bears hibernate and they emerge in the spring, they might be a little groggy at first, but they look fully rested. And winter can do that for us too, if we let it. The joy in the games, art, movies, the other ways that feel like they're slowing us down, they can actually do quite the opposite. That rest and joy, it re-energizes us. It's what our bodies need, and just like our bodies need to sleep. So if you find yourself slowing down the season, making more snow dragons outside, and you don't get to math on a single day, I'll leave you with this. On those days that you feel like you're behind, like you did, in quotes, too much art, or, in quotes, we only did games today. I want to ask you how long it took for your kids to learn how to play a video game or for you to learn the newest app. It doesn't really take us long. Why is that? It feels complicated, but we have rocket fuel behind us when we're interested and when we're rejuvenated. So in those times that you're slowing down, you're doing the opposite of really slowing down. You're recharging a rocket fuel tank. Because when it comes time to learn how to write those sentences so they can write the story that they've always wanted to write to illustrate these drawings that they've created, or when it comes to doing math just so they can buy that thing at the store because they need to know how to subtract decimals because they need to know how to handle money, I promise that they are going to have that rocket fuel and they will catch up in ways that you never thought possible. You are slowing down, but slowing down brings joy to your homeschool, and it's exactly what can propel you forward. There's no timeline on learning. There's no timeline for your kids, and you don't have to be done learning either. That's it this week, everyone. I hope that you can slow down sometime and remember that you're just refilling that rocket fuel tank, and I can't wait to see you blast off. Until next time.